Hey, this is Pastor Bungie Garrett, and I want to take this opportunity to present you with another word of encouragement. Well, it was only a matter of time before a full-blown heresy was introduced on the popular program, The Chosen. And while I realize that many Christians seem to have no problem when screenwriters put words into the mouth of our Savior Jesus, this is something that really concerns me, and it's, it's concerned me for quite some time now. And one reason why is because, you know, this really runs the risk of leading people to trust in another Jesus. Think about it for a moment. You know, it would be real easy for a person who doesn't really like spending time studying the Bible to simply spend their time learning about Jesus on programs like The Chosen. And while it's true that the Jesus on The Chosen says many, many things that we find in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it's also true that the Jesus that we find on The Chosen, well, this is also a character who says many things that weren't written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. No, instead they were written by Dallas Jenkins, Ryan Swanson, and Tyler Thompson. Now, what this means is that the Jesus on The Chosen is a character that's based on the imaginations of Dallas, Ryan, and Tyler. And, and listen, if we grant them the, the greatest benefit of the doubt that they truly want to present a perfect picture of the biblical Jesus, well, we must all also realize here that the longer they write this series and the longer they put words into the mouth of Jesus, well, the greater the risk of heresy. And it's sad to say that the writers of this show have already introduced several heretical statements. For example, you know, The Chosen presents us with the unbiblical situation where John the Baptist actually argues with Jesus for being too passive. Not only that, but the writers of this series would also have us to believe that Jesus tried to stop John the Baptist from going and confronting Herod about his sexual sin. They also depict Jesus as practicing his Sermon on the Mount, complete with, you know, the accidental outtakes that were apparently left out of the Bible. We also find the Jesus of the Chosen looking to Matthew for help as he prepares the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, you know, uh, rather than Jesus, uh, you know, speaking the words of the Father by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now listen, uh, some believe that this is just artistic license, and yet I would argue that this is extra-biblical. It's an extra-biblical reinvention of Jesus Christ. And in my opinion, the writers of The Chosen are actually leading people to believe in another Jesus who apparently needed help in sermon prep, you know. And what's even worse is, is that there's full-blown heresy that the writers have introduced, and this happened when Joseph accused Jesus of committing a transgression. I'm referring to the opening scene from season one, episode five. This is where we're introduced to a reimagined version of Luke's account of the three days when, you know, Joseph and Mary failed to realize that Jesus wasn't with them as they traveled in a caravan back to Nazareth. And I want to consider Luke's account, which is found in Luke chapter two. Here we learned about the time when Joseph and Mary, they were leading their family, uh, you know, from Jerusalem you know, back to Nazareth. And Luke tells us about the trip they took. And this was about you know, when Jesus was 12 years old. And here's how Luke writes it. He says, when they had finished the days, as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother did not know it. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances so when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now, so it was that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Now, here in Luke's account, we learn about these days when, when Jesus, you know, he, he spent three days there in the temple sitting in the midst of the teachers. And according to Luke, Jesus was listening to them and asking them questions. And not only that, but he also amazed the teachers with his level of understanding as, as well as the way that he answered their questions. And, and it was after three days time, that's when Mary and Joseph finally found him. 
And while this three days seems to be a prophetic foreshadow of the way that Jesus would rise up from the, the tomb on the third day, well, we can be certain that Joseph and Mary weren't ready to, to grasp that m mysterious truth. But, but instead, Mary simply expressed her disappointment with her son's decision to remain behind in Jerusalem without informing them. Now, uh, for the most part, the writers of The Chosen present this story with some level of accuracy, but then... Uh, you know, the, the, the writers of The Chosen deviate from the biblical text by putting blasphemous words into the mouth of Joseph. Here's how the scene actually continues uh, on The Chosen as Joseph looks to Jesus and, and asks Jesus, What are you going to do for your mother for this transgression? Wait, what? <laughs> Jesus was guilty of transgression? Now, just to be clear... The word transgression uh, is actually used in reference to those who disregard or violate the Mosaic law. So we have to ask, did Jesus violate the Mosaic law when he stayed behind there in Jerusalem? Well, according to Jesus, no. No, he wasn't violating the Mosaic law. And the reason why is because he was actually accomplishing the will of his heavenly father. He was where the heavenly father wanted him to be. And here's how Jesus explains it when he asks them, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Jesus wasn't transgressing the law of God. No, he was fulfilling the purpose that his father had for him. And as we take a, a closer look at Luke's account here, we learn here that Joseph, well, in the, in the text here of Luke, you know, Joseph never accused Jesus of committing a transgression. No, instead, Luke tells us that Joseph and Mary did not understand this statement which Jesus spoke to them. Therefore, you know, when the, when the writers of the chosen decided to add this to their, 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 their program, well, they were simultaneously running the risk of leading people to believe that Jesus was a boy who was guilty of violating the Mosaic law. Now, I realize that this addition to Joseph's reaction doesn't prove that the writers of the chosen believe that Jesus was guilty of sin. And yet there is an interview that includes two of the composers that are helping to create the chosen. I'm referring to Dan Hasseltein and Matthew Nelson, who together spent some time sharing their excitement about what they call the beautiful creativity of the chosen. And, and, and then according to Matthew Nelson, uh, this beautiful creativity doesn't need to be factually accurate. Yeah, that's right. They can just be creative without being factually accurate, according to the scriptures. Dan Hasseltein also went on to share this statement, and I quote him here. I think when they see this version of Jesus portrayed, I think it really does. It matters that he's merciful, that he's extending a lot of grace. He has his own flaws in a human way. That's right. The, the version of Jesus, that's what he says, the version of Jesus that they're portraying on the chosen is a flawed Jesus. You know, flawed in a human way. I, I, wait, I, I thought Jesus was the second Adam. I, I believe that Jesus, according to the scriptures, is the second Adam who escaped the flaws of fallen man. I'll remind you, the Holy Spirit placed the Logos of God within the womb of the Virgin Mary. And what this means is that Jesus was not affected by the fall of Adam and Eve uh, because of the special way that he was created there in the womb. And, and as we add all of this up, listen, the Jesus being portrayed on the chosen is a flawed human who has tra transgressed the law of Moses. And with that being the case, we can be certain that this is another Jesus. Further proof of my point is found in the fact that the Jesus that we find in the Holy Word of God is flawless and sinless. I think Paul explained it best in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. There he describes the way in which God the Father sent Christ Jesus, who never sinned, to become the offering for our sins so that we could be made right with God by faith in the sinless sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Here's how Paul puts it. He says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. From this, we can see that Jesus Christ remained sinless while he was here on the earth so that he could become a sinless sacrifice uh, who took the punishment that we deserve for our sins. The Apostle Peter confirms this in the first chapter of his first epistle. There he assures his audience that we were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold 
from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. That's right. The Lord Jesus Christ was like a sacrificial lamb with no blemish, with no spot, and in a spiritual sense, that's talking about the sinless nature of Christ and seeing how it was necessary for Jesus to remain sinless so that he could become our substitutionary sacrifice, well, it only stands to reason that the Jesus on the Chosen series, well, this must be another Jesus, because their Jesus was, uh, according to Joseph, guilty of transgressing the Mosaic Law, you know, because of his human flaws. Sadly, there are many who are following the flawed Jesus portrayed on the Chosen. And there are many kids who are learning about Jesus from this series. And it's sad to say that the longer this series is produced the more they will use their so-called artistic license to create extra-biblical stories that will inevitably include heretical information, like the story about the transgression of Jesus. Finally, I'll remind you of this series. It's, it's actually unifying people, but not in a good way. This series is unifying people as people are being drawn to this flawed Jesus. Here's how one Mormon, who actually serves as an advisor on the show, Here's how he justifies the time he spends helping this evangelical group create the chosen. And I quote him here. He says, if Jesus can call his ancient apostles from a range of backgrounds, including an apostate tax collector uh, on the one hand uh, uh, to stubborn, illiterate fishermen on the other, why can't he call evangelicals, Catholics, Jews, and even Latter-day Saints to the creation of a TV series about his life and ministry? In other words, what this Mormon advisor to those who are creating the chosen is saying, he's saying that why, why can't we, you know, invent a new Jesus that we all agree with here? Yeah, that's right. The, the Jesus of the chosen has been invented by the inspiration of evangelicals, Catholics, Jews, and Latter-day Saints. And what this means is that this is nothing more than a syncretistic Jesus who is just as flawed as his creators. And with that being the case, this show, in my opinion, is more dangerous than shows about secular nonsense that have nothing to do with the Bible. The reason why? It's because this show, The Chosen, is introducing people to another Jesus. Listen, if you want your kids to grow up watching Christian programs about Jesus, then I encourage you, spend some time making sure that the shows are actually presenting the true biblical Jesus, who is our perfect and our sinless Savior. And in this way, we'll help them to fight the good fight of faith and all for the glory of God.